Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. You got the Delta Force 23 Mini Sniper back on the block. This is our fast electric RC boat build series, part five. We're going to be installing hardware, battery trays, motor mount, servo mount, everything, the whole nine. So stick around. So, uh, so yeah, yeah, let's get, let's get to it. Let's get to it, huh? The lower you set your strut into the water, the higher the boat's going to ride in the water. The higher you set your strut on the back of the boat into the water, the lower the boat will ride. So it's kind of equal opposite reaction type deal. So, I think I'm going to drill it right here, all right? Let's do it. Let's drill it out. Let's drill it out, all right? make sure i got the right bit here it's a quarter inch stuffing tube this one of these right here i don't don't even know what it's called but these things are nice to have they really are check the size bit you're going to use with the hardware you're using you know you're sitting here trying to decide what you're going to do you're like contemplating on this contemplating on that my captain would say god hates a coward just do it god hates a coward so Captain Bob, this is a memory of you, buddy. Bob Nagy. One of the best offshore fishermen, fishing captains I've ever worked with. All right, all right. So yeah, yeah, the, the stuffing tube come out good. I, I kind of split the difference there, got it kind of low as I could, I could. I'm gonna go ahead and start installing the rudder base, trim tabs, and turn fin on this side of the boat. I have to install my, my servo mount that I made. It's gonna go in this back corner right here. So I need to install this first. I don't want to block off any of my holes, so I want to go ahead and epoxy or seal up all my transom hardware on the right side so that I can get a good placement for this servo mount in case I need to remove any of my hardware over here in the future. I don't want to block off any of the screws. So we're going to go ahead and install these real quick. I'm using Loctite Marine Adhesive Sealant, and I'm just going to kind of fast forward through the whole process so you guys aren't bored to death i'm just going to be installing screws nothing fancy and then we'll start epoxy and then the servo mount and then we'll get to everything else later on So yeah, yeah, before you tighten down your trim tabs, you just want to make sure that they're a little bit higher than the bottom of the boat, maybe a millimeter, if not dead in line with the bottom of the boat. You just don't want them lower than the bottom of the boat, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and tighten all this down. So I didn't tighten up my screws on my rudder. I want to put the blade on there and see if it's going to be like perfectly vertical. Uh, I don't want it to be cocked. You know, it needs to be straight up and down. Yeah, yeah, it's higher than a mosquito cha-cha. Looks good back there, got everything installed. Looks good, looks real good. So now I gotta uh, mock up the uh, servo mount right here. It's going in the back corner. I gotta drill a couple holes in the bottom, like epoxy dams. And I'm gonna use five minute epoxy just to tack it in place. Because I need it to be uh, cure up real quick you know what i'm saying and then i'm gonna do the 24 hour epoxy on it and i'll use these little hairs right here that we saved from reinforcing the hole 
we'll use these little hairs to reinforce everything and build up structure and strength with. All right, so I've got my my servo mount installed into the boat. I actually was wanting to mount mount it up in the corner, but if I mounted it up in the corner, it would the mount would have been in the way of my whole my 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 nuts and stuff. So I've got it positioned perfect. So when the servo's out, I can get to all all my hardware uh, easily. Also, my my thinking was to move it closer to the center of the boat so there's not so much weight on the outside edge and she don't sit awkward in the water. A few little holes in this, not all the way through, taped it up and epoxied these little standoffs. I'm about to go out and grind them down. All right, so, uh, so now that I got the battery trays all prepped up for, for epoxy, I'm going to go ahead and drill the holes out for my strut, mount my strut up, and we're going to epoxy the battery tray, ESC tray, motor mount, everything in all in one shot. So uh, I'm going to get the holes marked and drill holes for the strut, then we're going to start the rest. Loctite Marine Adhesive. Got my stuffing tube in there. It's just a little short stuffing tube, not not a full size stuffing tube, not even a bend in it. It's just going to help me whenever I'm <clears throat> mounting the strut up, and it's going to help me when I'm lining the motor up to the stuffing tube, temporary, you know. And then I'll pull the stuffing tube out, bend the stuffing tube, epoxy the stuffing tube in. But personally, I like to mount my motor first, and then epoxy my stuffing tube. That gives me something to shoot for you know I line my stuff and tube up into the collet just makes it easy on me some guys uh do it a little bit different all right so i'm gonna get this all bolted up and uh we'll be back uh, so yeah 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 finally coming together finally starting to come together i've got my center line drawn here all right i decided to put the stuff and tube everything center the boat like it should be um, I use this scribe tool that I made and I find my center with my motor mount see how my pencil goes down deep I'm gonna make sure I got everything lined up all right dead center with the with the line dead center with my stuffing tube um, if your stuffing tube is offset you need to offset your motor all right keep that in mind I'm gonna go ahead and uh, five minute epoxy just tack just a little bit of five minute epoxy tack this thing into place so it dries up quick then we're going to use the 24 hour slow cure to epoxy it in permanent but i like to tack it in place so i can um you know if it's not where i need it once it's dried i can pull it off basically and start over all right I'm putting my, my motor toward the back because I like to do a lot of motor changes so I'll be able to use my batteries as my CG point, you know, to balance the boat out with my batteries. Also, I'm going to be putting different motors in this boat. So I like my motor to be positioned toward the rear. I could have put my motor like up forward and use my, put my batteries permanently in the back, but it really wouldn't have given me much room to uh, position the battery. So, Motor positioning is it's really up to the hull how it balances out with the amount of power and weight you're going to be putting in the boat, um, and that kind of determines where you position your your motor. Um, like I said, I went up about three millimeters or four millimeters with my stuffing tube, so it don't ride too dry and it don't ride too wet. I'm trying to kind of um, split the difference. Now I was thinking about I'm really still thinking about making a flooded stuffing tube so I can actually move my strut up and down on the transom. 
uh, you know, it would only be a few millimeters, but that helps. And I'm still contemplating on it. And, and if I decide to do it, I need to do it before I put my motor mount in. You would be able to move it up and down. Get you about four or five millimeters of up and down travel without messing with the angle of your strut. So, I, golly, I've never done it before, so I'm kind of scared to do it. I don't know if this is the right size um, tube or not. It's a fiberglass tube. It's a rod and reel, a rod, fishing rod and it was broken so i cut it and i was like you know what it might work and it would just give me a little bit more tunability with this boat yeah that would that would really allow me to tune this boat much easier with a flooded stuffing tube and if i don't do it on this boat i may do it later on for another boat um that's one of the advantages of running a strut on your rc boat is uh, with a flooded chamber, a flooded stuffing tube, you can actually get up and down adjustability on your strut, whereas a stinger, you couldn't do that with. So that's kind of why I went with the strut. I was thinking about doing the flooded chamber. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I'm scared to do it. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I, I've never done it before. I've read up on it. I've never owned a boat with a flooded stuffing tube, but they look cool. I just, if I had a little bit bigger tube i would definitely do it this one's not quite big enough it's not quite big enough checking for center make sure it's centered with my scribe tool yes what i use so make sure everything's lined up i'm going to mix up my five minute epoxy dead nut center So another little tip for you guys, I used an old piece of flex cable. My After I epoxied it, it looked like my motor mount was kind of like cattywampus, like wanting to lean to one side. So I used my flex cable up against the, the gunnel here, and it kind of just is pushing it over. Boom! Huh? It looks good. Everything's nice and straight, all lined up with the boat. I'm going to start taking the motor out so I can have some room to work. With this 24 hour, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to lay out the battery trays. We're going to lay out the ESC tray and finish up reinforcing the motor mount with the fiberglass hair. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, the motor and we'll get started on it. So I've had my epoxy sitting up for about an hour, kind of thicken it up a little bit. So it's time to uh, start the 24 our epoxy process now this is where all of our strength is going to come from that five minute epoxy that we use just to tack everything down that's not structurally sound um, it needs 24 hour slow cure that's where you get all the strength and reinforcement from and we're going to go the extra mile and add fiber glass cloth this is why i told you guys to hold on to this because it helps reinforce all of this uh epoxy work we're about to do so it doesn't come off later on and fail and potentially mess your boat up all right um i don't even use a paintbrush i've got this stuff here taped off and i'm just going to go around the edges you guys seen where i chamfered the edges of the base so that the epoxy seeps into there uh, to the edges and kind of locks it in um, So what I'm gonna do is just gonna start laying down some light epoxy just by itself on the on the outsides of my rails and Out on the top sides of everything right here um, I'm gonna wait for it to cure up a little bit more before I do the bottom part because it'll like drip down yeah, this uh, take your time with it. You know, you don't you want it to look good. You don't want it to just slop it on there, or I, you know, I I don't slop it on there. I try to take my time, make it look good. 
because there's really no fixing it if you kind of just slob it on there you know you gotta sand and all that and it's hard to get to some of these places i take my boat up so i don't get epoxy everywhere you know keep a cloth nearby some q-tips nearby get some on the outside of this mount and we'll start laying down some of that fiberglass cloth now you just want to get some of the hairs some of these little fiberglass hairs here it don't really take a whole lot but just take a little bit of it and you mix it in with the epoxy that's already set out all right and you want to kind of get the hairs um, on both work pieces like you want to get it on the ESC mount and the bottom of the hull that's going to reinforce it I've got an example right here of epoxy that hadn't been reinforced this has been drying this is 24 hour and it's cured out for about two weeks now and look at look how flimsy it is okay you see that it has no rigidity it has no structure once you add these hairs to the mix it don't bend look at this I'm bending it this one will will bend so this is where you get your structure and strength from is the cloth it really does make a huge huge difference in the outcome of your workpiece you see what I'm doing I'm just kind of laying them down and you won't really even know they're there you won't even be able to tell it and, and really it adds uh, it really gives it a finished look to me with these with this cloth on it whereas you know before it just kind of you just pour the darn epoxy in and you know it just looks uh, looks unfinished to me Yeah, that's uh it turned out pretty good so far it turned out pretty good i'm going to go around and, and pull the tape and then fix anything that you know needs to be kind of feathered in or wiped up kind of clean it up a little bit boom ah yes the next day everything's cured out nice transitions on all of our epoxy joints don't look like we just dribbled epoxy in there everything's solid i got the servo mounted up ready for its through hole the battery straps are going to be able to move back and forth nice and smooth so uh so yeah it's starting to come together huh starting to come together our parts pile has dwindled dramatically uh we got to uh install the motor the stuffing tube in the next video uh steering linkage through hole esc the whole nine we're gonna finish it up in the next one it's turning out nice i'm really stoked about the way this boat's uh turning out and looking uh by the way if you guys are interested Email me uh, photos of your your boat that you're working on, the boat you've, you've built, and uh, I'm going to eventually make a video, if it's okay with you guys, with your photos of uh, my subscribers' boats, their rides, their builds. So, um, you know, that's something you guys can do and, and kind of look forward to in a future video. My my email address is in the description, but uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. We're, uh, we're D-U-N. <laughs> yeah 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 so uh so yeah yeah i appreciate you guys riding with me appreciate you guys uh watching the videos thank you for uh thank you for all the support we'll see you guys later we'll see you later with big b with ironclad rc a channel where we tinker test and tune everything rc we'll see you guys next time